Capital formation helps in the transfer of savings from households and government to business sectors, which lead to increased output and economic expansion. Welcome to another edition of the Nigeria Investor. Last week, we talked about the future of registrar business in Nigeria. Today, we want to look at formation of capital, growth of the Nigerian economy, and the market. Nigeria has vast economic potentials with a population of 170 million, a nominal GDP of $175 billion in 2006, and a current GDP of over $522.64 billion in 2014, with an average growth rate of 6.14% from year 2005 to 2014. Nigeria is currently the largest economy in Africa and one of the four largest economies in Africa and, and accounts for at least 41% of West African GDP. Our annual GDP growth rate between 1991 and 1999 was mere 2.9% with a decimal growth rate of 0.5%. But the GDP growth rate reached a high of 86 in Q4 2010 and a record low of 3.46 Q1 2012. Our dominance on crude oil has increased our vulnerability to commodity price volatility. Nigeria's fortunes oscillate with price fluctuation of crude oil prices and this affects macro stability and socioeconomic development. Since resources are increasingly channeled to the relatively capital intensive oil and gas industry, which is a virtual enclave, with the continuous importance of petroleum products and dependence on oil, trade deficits widen and foreign reserves drain as a result of poor expenditure management and the value of the Naira constraint. The macro instability sorts the investment outlook and undermine private sector investment, leading to unsustainable large trade deficit. What is lacking is a mechanism to coordinate fiscal policies in a manner at the government level consistent with national macro stability and the involvement of the capital market in self capital generation. The globally tested mechanism required is the introduction of a hybrid of capital market structure with the public sector. Why the capital market grew desk? One, takes the weight of the funding of social capital projects from government at the center to the private sector. Two, creates conducive structure for perpetuity of projects, even with the change of government or government policies. Three, secures the funding over a long period of time, which is required now. Four, ensures completion of all capital development projects for government due to its process. Five, projects by default will be executed by professionals for government. Six, corporate governance guides for the projects by, by government will be default due to its process. Seven, transparency will be by default for government. Eight, profitability will be by default for government. The guiding light for all the capital market finance project is that there will always be the trustees. The trustees will always execute the trust indexture, which currently guides the covenant of all capital project financed to execution. This is currently being used by the state government for state bonds. It is common knowledge that 104 billion was disbursed for the development of part of the Niger Delta and the committee that went for inspection could only locate 4 billion worth of project. With a capital market growth index, such funding will have been secured via an instrument covered by a trustee investor. Our SL school reserve of $20 billion six months ago has been depleted to $41 billion in 2014. Instead of outright spending, the same fund could have been used to guarantee capital projects to the same value of $20 billion via this capital market growth desk arrangement, and the project will still be done transparently and our reserve will still be in place. The positioning of the Minister of Finance as the pivotal ministry to drive other ministries economically can be further emphasized by the inclusion of the Minister of Finance as the coordinator of the economy management team. Ministries are governed by highly experienced technocrats that do not necessarily fall back on blueprints or plan recommended by the federal government of Nigeria. Hence, continuity is always lost by a change of ministers, but the capital market growth strategy is immune to change of leadership. The post-war regeneration of Europe and high growth rate of America, the oil riches of the Middle East, and the great fortune which have been credited to the emerging economies of Asia have all been processed via proper planning and capital market structure for long-term funding, and also protection to completion of projects. The capital market structure has immunized these various countries to changes in government or policies. This has assisted three nations in becoming wealthier and the wealth more widely distributed continuously. The long-term capital market approach assists in enhancing the effect of political stability, monetary stability, and strong currency. Every concentration of wealth at the center and such massive dependency upon essentially the oil industry has stunted the growth of the economy. The economy is reliant on this industry to expand, grow, and prosper. So we see today is all ministries and governments 
waiting money or year end to receive allocations without having or possessing long term monitored goals, without leveraging on their capital formation capacity as has been done in Asia, Europe, and America, etc., coupled with the attendant wealth distribution capacity of these major parastatas. Pivotal role of the Minister of Finance. The pivotal role of the Minister of Finance will be to introduce the potentials of the capital market growth desk to assist in one, capital formation policies and guides, two, capital implementation process, three, long-term capital requirement plan, four, long-term ISPO, five, federal government as an off-taker of no further recourse, six, federal government guarantees, and seven, bilateral trade policies. By application, ministry like the Ministry of Agriculture or ETC can be assisted by the above mentioned processes. This will thereby create a total departure from a monoproduct economy to a properly diversified economy. With this, the Minister of Finance will be playing the critical role of development planning. The approach generally acceptable in the subcontinent in the last four decades has been negotiating our development with external partners. This now requires an existing structured capitalism process instrument, thus the outcome of development being determined by external partners will become participatory by Nigerians for guarantees generations to come. Development planning has been approached as a largely technical or even technocratic exercise. Development planning still tends to be located in the domain of planners and more especially economists. Instead of the long-term capital provider and wealth distributors, the capital market playing part of the key role of capital formation. The trend should be capital formation policy being entrenched or being kick-started by the capital market in conjunction with the public sector. In this way, the government can actively participate in the capital formation and implementation process, rather than passively receiving allocation that do not have a protected long-term implementation structure that the capital market imbibes into structured development. This capital market desk will encourage ministries to share information, learn from each other, work together to solve common problems via structured long-term approach to issues on funding and structured implementation. As the ministers become more involved with the capital market growth desk, they become more experienced in structured approach and take increasing responsibility for planning and raising structured capital apart from the allocation from government. Impact. The over-reliance on oil and lack of economic diversification is almost equal to the instability of other ministries and others to generate income and being heavily reliant on government budget. This can be noticed in the bloated recurrent expenditure and budget as compared to the capital budget. The desk will bring this diversification process, develop non-oil producing states, enhance transparency in oil producing states. The government is fully aware of the fragility of this oil dependency situation and has frequently attempted to develop strategies and programs to diversify the resource-based industry. This has not yielded results. This capital market group does will coordinate this diversification and encourage ministries to adopt the capital formation process. The capital market group does with one, commence the practice of articulating a resource envelope for government to engender the capacity of Nigeria to finance its development agenda and create structural linkage that would guarantee prioritization of capital formation and financial allocation and implementation. Two, we ensure catalyst development strategies to reflect the true participation of key development ministries that are currently not at full efficiency. Three, increase the internal resource base for ministry via long-term capital formation plans, e.g. diversification and product on non petroleum sectors to enhance financial autonomy of the various ministries and Nigeria as a whole in funding the development agenda. For open a continuous capital market growth desk for a symbiotic participatory discussion on processes for the long-term vision of the country and the critical segment for growth at these various ministries. This edition of the Nigerian Investor is based on a paper titled Formation of a Capital Market Growth Desk Strategy to Improve the Nigerian Capital Market and the Economy by Akinshola Akindere Dolu Ali, FCS. On announcement in the market, assets basing and IT cover per share right issue opens. The issue of 7 billion, 627 million, 633 ordinary shares of 50 cover each on the basis of one ordinary share for, assist, for every three existing shares head at 690 cover per share opens on January 26, 2015 and is expected to close on March 4, 2015. Orlando PSC changes terms of right issue. Orlando PSC has notified the Nigerian Stock Exchange that the Security and Exchange Commission has approved the change in terms of its right issue. Accordingly, the right issue size, price, and ratio has been revised from 2 billion, 217 million, 265,184 ordinary shares of 50 cover each at 22 naira per share on the basis of one new shares for every four ordinary shares head to 
two billion nine hundred and five fifty six million two hundred and fifty three thousand five seventy nine ordinary shares or fifty cover each at sixteen naira fifty cover per share on the basis of one for every three shares head. On people and changes in board, Standard Alas Insurance appoints Ms. Wadu to Onua as new company secretary. The company, Standard Alliance Insurance PSE, has notified the exchange that following the re resignation of Ms. Agnes Umukuru as company secretary, Ms. Wadu to Onuaha has been appointed as the company's new secretary with effect from 30th December 2014. SEC assures of vibrant market. The acting director general of the Security and Estate Commission, Mr. Munir Guaso, has assured Nigerians that the commission will continue to ensure that the market remains vibrant in order to attract investors both locally and internationally. Mr. Guaso gave the assurance when he received members of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers in his commission's headquarters in Abuja on Wednesday, January 21, 2015. He said the current management will strive to develop domestic investment from retail and institutional investors. That's all we have for you on this edition of the Nigerian Investor. I remain your regular uncle until I come away again next week. Bye for now.